is Anarchast. Hey kids, welcome to another edition of Anarchast, your home for anarchy on the internet. I have a really interesting and special guest on today. I just, uh, actually he's messaged me on Facebook before, but I don't think I responded to him. I get uh, 100 Facebook messages a day, so if you have uh, messaged me it's, it, uh, and I don't respond, it's not because I hate you, it's just because I literally can't answer them all. Uh, I didn't even realize it though till today when I saw that he had come out with this video of him uh, asking just one simple question of Nancy Pelosi, and this video has now gone viral. He's been on, uh, he's been, I think you were on InfoWars already, you're going to be on Fox tomorrow, you're trying to decide whether you want to be on Fox and Friends or Neil Cavuto, uh, so he's got a lot of uh, interest, uh, he was on Drudge Report, uh, so this, this uh, uh, just this one question he asked Nancy Pelosi, and I'm going to play this whole video, actually, what I'll do is I'm going to play this right now, because it, we're going to talk a bit about it, and so I'm going to play the video, and then we'll come back, we'll talk to Andrew Demeter. Why do you support the NSA's illegal and ubiquitous uh, data collection? Well, I, I, do not, I have questions about the metadata collection that they were uh, collecting unless they had a reason to do so. Uh, so I found, I was one from, I, did, I didn't support, I didn't support Amash, that resolution. I didn't think that was the appropriate resolution. Uh, but I do think that the burden is on the the uh, department and I have fought them for years, on the community, fought them for years on the wide swath that they have put out there. You did on. vote for a bill to continue funding for the NSA though? Yeah, of course. I don't think we should not fund the National Security Agency. No, they do many, is many it, things. Isn't the NSA a clear Thank violation you. of the Fourth Amendment? No, no. Some of what they should, what they do should be subjected to scrutiny in some of the things, but they perform many other functions as well and uh, we hold them to a high order. And I've had my biggest fight here in, in the intelligence community with the director of the NSA, uh, Hayden, when he was the director, I don't think he was on the level with us. But that doesn't mean that there aren't other things that are there uh, that, are, uh, that are good things uh, that, are, that are necessary for us to have. But from 9-11 on, the Bush administration went too far on all of these things and, and uh, so we have the correspondence back and forth to prove or to demonstrate that they were just doing the wrong thing. So I should have warned you before seeing that video how painful it is to hear Nancy Pelosi and her answers. And uh, we're gonna, I'm going to ask Andrew all about how that came about. But uh, first thing, Andrew, I always have to ask is how did you become an anarchist? Yeah, so we had this discussion a little earlier today. I wouldn't necessarily classify myself as an anarchist, but I'm more of a libertarian. I guess I just kind of adopt the ideas of or the ideologies of an absence of coercion, uh, voluntary association, and the non-aggression principle, you know, uh, do unto others what you would uh, have them do unto you. So, so I'm not necessarily an anarchist, but I do see uh, anarchy working in our everyday lives. I read an essay a while ago. I can't recall the the author of it, but it was called I Pencil, and it was really interesting in that it said no single person, which is kind of analogous to government, holds the complete knowledge of how to create a pencil, how to manufacture it. But it says that there's all these different individual entities working cooperatively to create this pencil, you know, the people chopping down the wood, the people uh, adding the furlough to the pencil, adding the eraser. So, so that's a really interesting concept, and I think uh, that's kind of representative of how anarchy does work in our daily lives, although it may not at this point, in my opinion, be feasible to uh, the full scale of government. Yeah, I think that's totally a fine perspective. You're a young man, 16 years old. You're still figuring out a lot of these concepts. But what you did tell me was that you are, uh, you really uh, believe in these concepts of uh, spontaneous cooperation, voluntary association, the absence of coercion. That alone essentially makes you an anarchist. That's what anarchists believe. Now, nobody knows if it'll really work in the, in the world today, if people are ready for it. Uh, we have no idea. But uh, what, uh, and so you can still be an anarchist and not necessarily know 
if it would really work uh, and how it would work. No one has any idea. We've uh, all lived in very statist and collectivist uh, violence enforced and, and taxation theft uh, based uh, systems for our entire lives and for centuries actually for the most part. So uh, that's totally fair comment and, and it's interesting and I think the more that you uh, learn about anarchy uh, the more that you'll you'll probably describe yourself as one but I, I don't want to put those words in your mouth but that's totally cool. And uh, you, what you described about spontaneous cooperation just making a pencil for people who haven't read that that's a real eye opener uh, to all the spontaneous cooperation that happens in a in a private market uh, when it's unhindered by government uh, the, to uh, just create a pencil it's literally tens of thousands of people involved it's amazing and of course you couldn't do that without all these things happening spontaneously uh, but let's forget about that because I got to talk about this video <laughs> Like, unbelievable. I, I really was just cringing watching Nancy Pelosi try to answer that question. The, the question was a very just, uh, you would think that a person like Nancy Pelosi would be able to answer that semi-intelligently. It was just saying that the NSA is, is uh, illegal in terms of the Constitution and what her thoughts on it was. And I've never seen anyone just fumbling over it. Uh, was that the first time you've sort of confronted a person like Nancy Pelosi? That was the first time. Hopefully I can uh, expose more hypocrisy and the paradox that is politics in the future. But yeah, it was it was pretty entertaining to watch Pelosi do what she did, I think. In a lot of articles that covered the story, story, they described it as, you know, and we can get into this too, more of the meat and potatoes of the story. She thought it was kind of going to be this uh, easy uh, photo opportunity of some kids uh, drunk on Common Core and <laughs> evidently she can see that that really didn't work out in her favor but like you said too uh, this was well you kind of alluded to it this was just a legitimate question I wasn't trying to nefariously expose her and make her look like some some incompetent official I was just asking a legitimate question and as you can see in the video her legislative assistant just freaks out trying to interrupt me mid question just you know thanks for coming everyone try to get me out of there so it was it was really an eye-opening experience experience, but I should say unsurprising. Yes, it is unsurprising, and uh, that's the way it is today. Uh, they don't let any real journalist, which is what you are, uh, approach and ask a real question of these people, and that's what happens when you do. If they're not, if they don't have scripted answers ready for them, uh, and Obama without his teleprompter, uh, they're bumbling idiots for the most part, and it just goes to show. And but I really liked it, and I've seen a, a bunch of your videos now. I just watched them today, and uh, incredibly professional uh, for your age. It's it's uh, astounding how. Uh, uh, professional and, and excellent you are as a journalist, and you're a true journalist. And one of the people I've had on uh, that I'm sure you're aware of is Luke Radowski of We Are Change, mm -hmm. and uh, I consider him to be a hero. He's a total investigative journalist. He was just at the Bilderberg Group meeting in, in Denmark. Uh, doing amazing work and I'm seeing all kinds of younger people coming out now and actually doing real journalism and, and that was uh, what you were really doing just asking one question uh, and I, I really hope that you do more things like that and I hope that the people watching this if you're a younger person you're wondering how you can get involved how you can shake things up and actually uh, expose some of these uh, criminals like Nancy Pelosi uh, uh, you should really be looking to someone like Andrew to as a and uh, Luke Radowski and uh, just so you know by the way I don't know if if you know about this, Andrew, Andrew, but Luke Radowski is doing something called uh, Change U uh, Media University, mm -hmm. and uh, he's he's hoping to sort of train a, a whole generation of investigative journalists, uh, and so I definitely hope to see much more from you on that sort of a thing. We need a lot more like that. Yeah, I definitely appreciate what, what Luke's doing. He actually reposted the video. Uh, we've been having, as Pelosi would say, uh, some correspondence back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, Luke's a great guy. But also, when you're saying that I'm engaging in real journalism, genuine journalism, that questions that the mainstream media aren't willing to ask or they're thinking that they're going to put their job on the line for doing so, which is kind of <laughs> ironic, you know, it's really representative of how far down the tubes our country has gone because even before I posted this confrontation and getting the footage was a whole nother battle but before I posted this I showed it to some family members uh, the first person I showed was my mom and she said after watching it she kind of said and I, she essentially said this uh, verbatim. She said, you know, I hope you live until you're 18. And whether that's paranoia, whether that's half-joking, or whether that's full-fledged reality, 
it's just ridiculous if these are genuine concerns that people think that you ask a single question, you challenge the dogma of authority in our country, and you know you're going to be black bagged and sent off to Gitmo, or or your house is going to be uh, patrolled by black helicopters. So it's just absurd. Again, whether those uh, criticisms or or comments are founded or unfounded, I find that really disconcerting. Yeah, it really says a lot because, of course, the U.S. Uh, supposedly is the land of the free, home of the brave. If you talk to a lot of your typical patriots in the U.S. and you say the U.S. isn't the land of the free at all, they'll say, oh, well, in China, they'll put you in jail if you uh, ask a question or say something bad about the government. And that is sort of true. Uh, in some places, they will do that. Uh, but the U.S. is just getting worse and worse. I believe it's number 47 or 44 on the... Uh, press freedom index right now somewhere in between Zimbabwe and Haiti I believe uh, and just the fact that like like your mom said and I think that is a, a realistic thing to say uh, I don't think you're going to end up in Guant Guantanamo or anything for this video but just the fact that that's even a possibility or something that people are thinking about says a lot about what's going on in the U.S. today. Yeah, I mean, who knows? It is it is definitely a full possibility considering legislation like the NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Act, the 2012 rendition to be particular that Obama signed into law saying that, you know, if you're some enemy combatant with no uh, clear definition given in the legislation in Section 1024, then you could be uh, sent off to Gitmo. So, you know, who knows? Maybe asking a legitimate question, challenging someone's authority is considered a, a belligerent act against the United States. But I also think it's important to say that when I did confront Pelosi, it, it really says a lot about her and not necessarily in a bad way. You know, I don't necessarily oppose her as an individual. I respect all individuals. But politically, I think her policy policy making could be uh, slightly changed. But when you confront these people, as Luke Rud Rudkowski can attest to, um, when I've spoken with him, he says, you know, it really shows how vulnerable these people are, and not necessarily in a bad sense, but just the fact that they're humans too. They make mistakes, they stumble, and they're not really these all-powerful oligarchs that most would be led to believe. Yeah, it really is uh, different when they're in front of the camera with their script and when they're caught off guard. It's completely different. They are people. Uh, Nancy Pelosi, it's really close for me and calling her an actual human being. Uh, but uh, in any case, it's, it's, uh, uh, it is interesting to see. And um, I believe that you had some problem even getting the video and you said there's a story behind that. Yeah, so I also released a press release with this video just because I thought it would get the the volume of attention that it did. And, I mean, this is kind of a side story. It's not like this big thing that I think they're up to anything nefarious. But the whole reason that I was in D.C., kind of to preface this, provide some background as well, I had won a contest with C-SPAN that they host annually called Student Cam, which is for high school and middle school students, where you essentially create a documentary, even though it's like seven minutes, so it's technically a micro-documentary, on a political issue. And this year's theme was, what issue should Congress address in 2014. Now, going into this, I knew that Congress really wasn't going to consider anything that a 16-year-old or younger had to say, but so we were in D.C. with C-SPAN. There was a, a group of five of us, as you can see in the video, and you'll see in the first part of the video, that footage was actually captured uh, from my cell phone. So what I did was I had my cell phone in my pocket, when we went in, surprisingly, you know, we weren't uh, patted down and uh, molested before we had to go in there. I mean, we did have to go through security, but so I had my cell phone in my pocket and uh, the whole, how the whole thing kind of uh, came about was that everyone who had created a documentary, each of the five people, uh, we kind of went around in a circle. Pelosi introduced herself, introduced the person, and then they, she said, you know, what was your docu documentary about, and uh, do you have any questions for me about it? So, although mine was on genetically modified organisms, GMOs, I was the last person to ask a question, and the uh, contestant before me, Peter, uh, he created a documentary about the NSA. So I figured, you know, how convenient is this? So I had the question in mind ahead of time, and then I just fired away, but 
going back to what you said about the footage, I pulled my phone out of the pocket, started recording like two minutes before it was my turn, and then when it was my turn to ask the question, I held up the phone right in her face pretty much and uh, and got the footage. So the problem was when I was recording on my phone, it kept... Uh, the the time recorded had kept increasing, and by the end of the confrontation, when I hit the stop record button, uh, it was about an eight minute video. And then when we were leaving the Capitol, uh, one of C-SPAN's employees, who will go unnamed because I I am I don't think he's up to anything nefarious. Like I said, he kind of asked, you know, I saw you recording. Were you planning on posting that to YouTube? Curiously enough, so I said at the time, not knowing that my phone had actually not recorded the full confrontation. I maybe snobbishly kind of almost said, you know, well, why does it matter to you? What what difference does it make, as uh, Hillary Clinton would say? So <laughs> then uh, at lunch that day, I had then figured out upon reviewing the footage or lack thereof that it only recorded four minutes of the confrontation instead of the full eight. And right when I asked the question, essentially, I got a little bit of her response and then it cut out. Now, it's not some conspiracy because my phone has had problems with uh, insufficient memory before. So that was really disappointing. Then when I flew back home, I figured, well, C-SPAN had a cameraman there. That's one thing I remembered. So then I sent an email to C-SPAN to a different individual than had then the person that had uh, confronted me kind of about posting it on YouTube. And they, um, the person that I emailed originally didn't actually email me back, and instead it was the individual that questioned me about posting it on YouTube, even though I didn't send that email to him. And he essentially said, well, we can't send you the footage per our agreement with Pelosi's office, which I found kind of funny. C-SPAN, supposedly unbiased and objective, won't send me a hard-hitting question. And the basis on this individual not sending me the clip was that they weren't allowed to record audio but curiously enough and I have video evidence of it when we were there the C-SPAN cameraman was not only filming but he had this massive microphone attached to the camera holding it out trying to pick up audio so I found that pretty darn funny and eventually I essentially called out this C-SPAN employee again not trying to demonize C-SPAN as a whole because I respect uh, what they do but I essentially said well, you never told us about this imaginary agreement, and more importantly, um, you know, I think it's kind of contrary to C-SPAN's philosophy of being unbiased. After all, the whole point of uh, this student cam documentary competition was to get both sides of the story. So for you to essentially censor or intimidate me from uploading this footage is absolutely ridiculous. And eventually I won them over and got the footage. I had to <clears throat> send them a flash drive in the mail the first time somehow it got sent back, and then I had to send another one, and finally I got the clip. Wow, that's great, and a great story, and that's uh, very similar to what Luke Rudowski always uh, says, is that it's not easy doing these things. You're always going to have to fight, uh, get, you know, you, you can't just uh, wither away when C-SPAN says, we're not going to give you the video. You have to keep on these things, and it just goes to show, if you do, you can sometimes get this uh, footage that you might not have otherwise had, and, and Luke is always doing things like that, and uh, I think you have just an amazing uh, future as an investigative journalist or whatever you want to do. I don't even know what you want to do. You're in high school right now now, which must be just a complete waste of time for someone like you. Well, you know, I don't, I don't like to keep the rhetoric uh, too hot here, but, but all I can say is it's a lot of memorization, a lot of things that I am apathetic towards, a lot of things that I think if I substituted with things I was actually passionate about, I could make much more productive use of my time. But even so, past all the homework and everything, I still manage to uh, confront some powerful people or a powerful individual in this case. Um, so I think my efforts are still, uh, are still uh, productive. Yeah, it's funny that you say that because what you're saying is you do waste a lot of time in school. It's too bad because you could be doing things like this, but you still manage to get to do things like this, which is great. Uh, and, uh, and that's all part of something I talk about called unschooling. Uh, that I really believe in and what you were saying is you don't have any interest in a lot of these things that you're being forced to memorize and you're probably never going to use again and you just don't have any interest in them at this moment in time. Uh, unschooling is all about just uh, if you have younger, I have children, uh, I just I want them to just learn whatever they want to know about and if people, if kids uh, have that approach to learning, they're just constantly always wanting to learn because there's always something they're curious about, everyone has something they're interested in and uh, 
Uh, one of the people actually that I used to have on Anarchast, I had on Anarchast, is Jeff Maxim, and he's 15, and he actually uh, quit school after he saw some of my videos and a few other videos on unschooling. He talked his parents into saying, uh, I just, I'm wasting my time there. I'd rather go off and learn things and do businesses and things like that. And he's actually here in Acapulco where I am right now. He's actually staying in my house. Uh, he's been traveling around Mexico. He's been writing articles, getting paid for them. Uh, he's, um, looking at different business opportunities he wants to do in Bitcoin. Uh, so it's amazing, uh, what, uh, you can do if you're, if you're, uh, just unrestrained from some of these things that are just really anachronistic, like the public schooling system. Uh, speaking of Bitcoin, you did a, is the documentary out? I know you did a mini documentary or something on Bitcoin. Uh, so tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, it was just a mini documentary. Uh, there was no uh, bigger documentary or anything. That was the full thing. But but yeah, uh, Bitcoin's definitely interesting, definitely provides some potential. It strips away, for one, the ability of men in suits to print their own money out of thin air to fund wars, immoral wars, and uh, the war on terror, the war on drugs. I mean, it's absolutely li r r ridiculous. So when you decentralize currency, among other things, like uh, the monopolized food corporations, Monsanto for one, uh, grow your own food, uh, decentralization provides a lot of interesting opportunities and really puts power in the back in, back in the hands of people. And I think Bitcoin is just uh, one of many implementations of decentralization in the future, such as journalism too. I'm I'm decentralized from the mainstream dinosaur media, as it's called, and in so doing, I am allowed to uh, do a lot of things that the mainstream media wouldn't touch. So again, decentralization it it provides a lot of interesting opportunities, and uh, it's really seeming with potential. Wow, you really impressed me and uh, really impressed with all your work uh, for your age. Like I said, it's unbelievable. I'm, I'm sure we're going to see so much more from you. I wouldn't be surprised to hear a lot more from you in the future. Uh, keep up the great work. Why don't you let people know where they can find? I know you have a YouTube channel called Teen Take. Let them know where they can find that. And anything else you want to let them know? Yeah, so youtube.com slash teen take is where you can view my videos, namely the Pelosi confrontation, which most would probably want to take a little look at. Uh, you can also visit facebook.com slash teen take. I try to keep it simple. Uh, and that's where you can view some other posts. I generally don't post too much anymore on Facebook on my fan page. Uh, fan page. Um, and then otherwise, uh, you can go to andrewdemeter.com. Demeter is D-E-M-E-T-E-R. Uh, it'll just redirect you to my YouTube page. But maybe I'll uh, create a professional website in the future. Who knows? And other than that, you know, Jeff, I just really appreciate what you're doing. I truly appreciate the fact that you uh, ha took the time out of your day to have me on. And uh, I'm glad glad to spread the message of liberty. Uh, it's amazing. And uh, again, thank you for being on. I, I really am so impressed by you. And uh, for the people watching out there, um, this is one of the things that you can be doing. If, you, if you're around some of these government officials, uh, just ask them a question. You'll be amazed uh, what could come out. If we can have people like Andrew out there in every single public uh, uh, appearance that some of these uh, politicians are doing, just asking, not, not being aggressive, not, not being, uh, you know, yelling at them or calling them names, but just ask them a simple question that is very honest like Andrew did, and uh, that could really change things. We're really seeing a revolution in how things are being reported. Uh, we're seeing the mainstream media just going down in ratings. It, almost no one watches it anymore. I believe Fox's uh, um, demographics now, there's hardly anyone under 75 years old who even <laughs> watches it, and it's just like a few old folks in an old folks' home somewhere. Uh, it's really almost nothing, and people like Luke Radowski and many others are just growing, and I'm sure Andrew will be as well. Uh, so that's uh, one way that you can uh, really affect change is just get out there and, and interact and and uh, don't be too scared to ask a question. Uh, we need more people to ask questions. So I'd like to once again thank Andrew Demet Demeter and uh, definitely check out his uh, teen take. Uh, he's got some amazing videos on there. You'll be amazed at the quality. I'm actually almost, uh, you know, feel a little bit uh, <laughs> like uh, I'm a bit of an amateur here compared to him. He he's does such an amazing job. So definitely check him out. He shows there's a lot of hope out there. There's a lot of young young people out there that are doing some great things. So that's it for Anarchast, your home for anarchy on the internet. Peace, love, and anarchy. This is Anarchast. <laughs>